faculty, which is prescribed for your third semester English honors, paper seven. Now here we are uh, going to have a bird's eye view of the play, uh, sort of a gist of the play. So let's go to the slides prop. Yeah, that is it, the title slide, the Duchess of Melfi, a bird's eye view. Semester three, CBCS, paper seven, English 8C, 3036. So get ready for an overall understanding of the play. First, thing, first things first, playwright, period, performance, and publication. The Duchess of Melfi is a play by John Webster, uh, who belongs to the Jacobian period, that is from 1603 to 1625. It was first performed in 1614 and published in a folio in 1623. So those are the basic bullet points regarding the play, The Duchess of Melfi. Now coming to the genre of the play. Now, broadly, of course, uh, its genre is dramatic. Um, within that, we can say it's a tragedy, and it's a tragedy based on the revenge motive. So we call it a revenge tragedy, a lot of horrible incidents, a lot of horror is inflicted on the Duchess by her brothers for defying them. There's a lot of bloodshed, violence, sensational incidents, and we call it the tragedy of blood. And all this is the influence of the Senecan uh, tragedy tradition. So we can call it a Senecan revenge tragedy. Next, coming to the characters, which are the most important characters of the play? Topmost, of course, the title role is played by the, played by the Duchess herself. Uh, she remains unnamed. We know her as the Duchess of Melfi. And as she says, uh, close to her death, she still could say, I am Duchess of Melfi still. Then there are her twin brother. There is a twin brother, Duke Ferdinand, and the other brother, the Cardinal. Another important character who is almost at par with the Duchess is Bosola, the tool villain of the play. He conforms to the malcontent mold, a stock character in drama who rails against the very things he desires. And Bosola is an alienated intellectual. He is a scholar, but has found no proper employment. And he feels he does not belong to the society. So he is an alienated intellectual. Then there's Antonio, the steward of the Duchess, and later her husband. There's Cariola, another important character, the Duchess's maid, who actually is a witness to the private marriage of the Duchess and Antonio. The marriage takes place in hiding, avoiding the glare of the revengeful brothers. Then there's Julia, wife of Castruccio, mistress of the Cardinal, who woos Bosola and is wooed by Delio. This Julia too is, a, uh, is an important character. She is a foil to the Duchess. Then there are the Duchess's children, Delio, Castruccio, and others, other characters. These are the important characters of the play, that Duchess of Malfi. Now coming to the setting of the play. Uh, setting, of course, means the place where the action takes place, and of course, the time as well. Now, the Duchess of Malfi, the play is based on an actual incident that took place in Italy the previous century, previous to uh, John Webster, actually. That is in the late 15th century. So the setting is Italian. And at the center is Melfi. The court of Melfi is the center of the plot of the Duchess of Melfi. Now coming to the plot. The main plot, the main action of the play involves the brothers' revenge on their widowed sister for remarrying. At the very beginning of the play, we see the brothers warning her, their sister not to remarry. And then there is a subplot, the Julia Cardinal affair, which of course, as we have said, this strongly highlights the character of the Duchess by contrast. It's a revenge tragedy plot, but here too, uh, as in other areas we shall see, Webster deviates from the tradition. In traditional revenge tragedies, our sympathies are with the Avengers. For example, when Hamlet in Hamlet takes revenge of his father's murder, our sympathies are no doubt with Hamlet. But here in the Duchess of Melfi, our sympathies are not with the brothers. Our sympathies are with the Duchess, who is actually sinned against without sinning. 
then uh, there are actually two revenges here. The play, in fact, has two endings. The Duchess is uh, horribly tortured and punished by the brothers for defying them and marrying below her status. And ultimately, the Duchess is strangled to death. But then there's another revenge. In the fifth act, Bosola now takes revenge upon the brothers for being thwarted and deceived by the brothers, for not being given his dues, for the services he renders to them. Of course, Basola also has a change of heart, a regeneration. Now, this fifth act of the play is sometimes criticized for weakening the plot. But there's other view that the fifth act actually ensures that partial justice is done. Now, the bad characters all are killed in the fifth, bringing back or restoring some morality to the play, some rationality to the irrational environment of the play. And the fifth act actually restores the, or puts Basola at par with the Duchess, so that we can almost say that the Duchess of Melfi has twin protagonists, the Duchess and Basola. At the outset of the play, which is the exposition, we see a contrast being drawn between Melfi and the French court. Antonio and Delio's conversation brings to the fore the harmony and purity of the French court. That actually highlights the corruption and degeneration of the Melfi court. The initial conflict of the play is the conflict between the brother, brother's desires and the uh, Duchess's love for her steward Antonio. This initial conflict develops and intensifies, leading to the climax where the Duchess is ultimately, after all the horrors inflicted on her, is strangled to death. This is the climax of the play. But after that comes the Dinoma, Basola's revenge on the brothers. Now, we said the Duchess of Malfi is a Jacobian play. So it conforms to many of the Jacobian run-of-the-mill melodramas. In the Jacobian period, we know there was a decadence and melodramatic plays flourished. So Duchess of Belfi also has a number of melodramatic elements like sensational incidents, which are theatrically great, of course, and a lot of violence and bloodshed. And more importantly, there are a lot of improbable incidents and coincidences. So uh, it is in the mold of the general Jacobian melodramas. However, the Duchess of Belfi is not just a melodrama. It's one of the great tragedies, in fact, second only to Shakespeare's. What raises it beyond the run-of-the-mill melodrama are the following. First of all, Webster's poetry. The great poetry of Webster, Webster lifts the play far above the melodramatic plays of the time. Then the great characterization of the Duchess itself is one of the positives, one of the highlights of the play, which makes it uh, much more than a melodrama. Then the fact that, as we have discussed at the end, partial justice is restored, morality is restored, makes the play a great tragedy, not just a melodrama. Now coming to Webster's sources, we know that the Duchess of Melfi is actually based on an incident that took place in Italy an actual real life incident. This incident uh, became uh, the stuff of many literary representations. The most important of them are Di Matteo Bandello's novel, which published in 1554. It's an Italian work. Then Francis de Belfort's Histories Tragics, 1565, a French work. Then William Painter's The Palace of Pleasure, published in 1566, which is an English work. Now, all these sources are uh, work worked on by Webster. He draws from these sources, blends them, adds his own originality, creativity, and creates his uh, unique play, The Duchess of Melfi. Now, where does this originality of Webster lie? Many important points here. First of all, the character of Bosola itself. In the sources, Bosola is an ordinary character, a minor character, who appears towards the end of the works. However, in the Duchess of Malfi, Basula's character is magnified. He is, uh, in fact, 
made equal to the Duchess. The whole fifth act is dedicated to Basola's ribbons. That's one of the deviations from the sources. Then the Julia episode, which actually highlights the greatness of the Duchess, the virtuous, virtuousness and nobility of the Duchess, is totally Webster's creations. Nowhere in the sources do we find the Julia episode. Then the most significant aspect of the play, most significant deviation, is that in the sources, uh, The Duchess is condemned actually for the breach, as if she has crossed the limits. She has defied the brothers and she deserves the punishment. Webster turns it around actually. In the Duchess of Malfi, it is not the Duchess who is condemned. She is glorified, she is given nobility. It is the brothers who were actually condemned. Then why do the brothers take revenge upon their sister? What makes them so violent against their sister for remarrying? There are three reasons for that. First of all, inheritance, the greed of the brothers. They wanted the sister not to remarry, to keep, the, keep her property and wealth with them. Secondly, the prospect of the Duchess marrying below her status enrages them. They did not want the Duchess uh, lowering their status and rank in society. And finally, Ferdinand's perverted lust for his sister is also responsible for the violence inflicted upon the, the sister for remarrying. Now, what are the traditional influences upon the play? Of course, most importantly, Senecan revenge tragedy influences the play. It's a Senecan tragedy and the influence of Machiavelli. Here we see a world where end justifies the means. The Melfi court is corrupt, the lack of morality and justice. Then the Jacobian society itself uh, inspires the play, the corruption of the state and the church. It's a magnificent world that is presented here, very uh, powerful world, but powerful, but uh, without justice. And it is a cruel world, immoral world. And the universities are the breeding grounds of seditious, alienated intellectuals who do not find proper employment. Uh, this is revealed in the character of Basola mainly. Then coming to the themes of the play. The central theme, of course, as it is a revenge tragedy is, is revenge. But there are two revenges here. First of all, the brother's revenge upon the sister. And then towards the end, Bosola's revenge upon the brothers for not being rewarded for the services he rendered to them. Then there is love, Duchess's love for Antonio. Loyalty, Cariola, the maid is an exemplum of loyalty. She's, she stands by the Duchess. She is the one who is the witness to the private marriage of Duchess and Antonio, but she does not betray her. She dies by her mistress. That's what loyalty is all about. Then along with loyalty, of course, there's betrayal in the play as well. Julia betrays the Cardinal and Bosola betrays the Duchess. Bosola, the undercover spy appointed by the brothers to keep an eye on their sister, gains the confidence of the sister and ultimately betrays her to their brother, to her brothers. Then women's position is an important theme of the play. Women's position, of course, clubbed with the public and private appearance and reality theme. The, the Duchess in public is an important personage. She holds an important position, she is the Duchess, but at home she is being dictated and controlled by her brothers sought to be controlled by the brothers. Then service and reward is also an important theme of the play with respect to Bosola, as we have seen. Then corruption of the church and the state, Machiavellism, greed and incest, greed of the brothers and incest, of, incest in the case of Ferdinand. Overall, the sense that we get reading the play is the vanity of worldly power and rank. So these are the important themes of the play that that's of Melfi. Then there are certain other aspects which you need to keep an eye on as you read and analyze the play. The play, with, replete, play is replete with death and disease imagery. And man is presented as a puppet, like flies to Venton boys are we to the gods. They kill us for their sport. And that is the sense we get. Then madness, as in other events, tragedies. Madness is a, an important aspect of the play. Ferdinand, towards the end of the play, goes mad. 
and then mad men are lo let loose upon the Duchess during her imprisonment. Such horrible tortures are inflicted on her by, by her brothers. Horror and torture are part of the play. Uh, a dead man's hand is given to the Duchess. Wax figures for children shown as dead to her. Uh, this, this is the kind of uh, torture inflicted on the Duchess. Then there are a lot of improbabilities, as we said earlier. For example, the very fact that the marriage of the Duchess to Antonio and her children remain a uh, secret for so long is an improbability. Improbability. Then there are coincidences, like the horoscope episode, which actually reveals uh, the marriage finally to Bosola. And then Antonio appearing towards the end being and being mistaken for the cardinal and killed. These are all coincidences that the writer exploits. And finally, it says satire on uh, the Jacobian society. These are some of the important uh, aspects of the play, the Duchess of Melfi. So in these slides, we have seen the outline of the play, various aspects of the play, from the genre to the themes, to the plot. And as you read the play, and as you analyze the play, uh, keep an eye on these aspects of the play. That will help you in uh, answering the questions and also in understanding the play. And I hope this brief presentation will be of help to you. And this will aid you in your understanding of the play. So thank you once again.